Okay, so for today, uh, we start with a discussion on the topic four, which is prototyping part one. So basically for the prototyping, we have uh, prototyping one and prototyping two. For the prototyping one, basically we will cover on the uh, PCB. Yeah? Most of the materials in this uh, prototyping one, which is topic four, is related to uh, PCB design and also the fabrication of the PCB. Okay, so uh, these are uh, the objective eh, for this. Why is this? Uh, let's just slide. It's automatically slides. Click on here. Okay. So these are the, the objective. Uh, the first one is hopefully that the student can explain what is PCB. Okay. Second one is uh, the student should know the procedure about PCB fabrication process. Okay. So these are the objective uh, that I have already revised for these slides. If you if you see in the uh, the, the previous slides, which is not the updated one, uh, there are four or five uh, objectives overall, which, which is not related to content of this uh, slide. So I have made some changes, which is actually the objective we need to achieve in this uh, topic four only two, which is firstly, what we like to know what is PCB. Okay, and then uh, what we want to know the procedures that that we are going to use to produce or to fabricate the PCB. And then these are the topics, uh, units of the topic, okay? Uh, firstly, uh, we will be talking about the uh, PCB. Then 4.2 is about the PCB design concept, which is much more related to how we can use the software to do design of the PCB layout and also uh, PCB artwork, okay? And then, 4.3, we'll be discussing on the PCB fabrication process, which is, I think, the most uh, important part in this, uh, which is 4.3 is the most important part that is covered, uh, which is the, the most important content covered in this prototyping one. Okay, so uh, the first thing we'd like to know is, uh, what is prototype? Yeah, what is prototype? So prototype is something which is device eh, that is suitable for complete evaluation in terms of electrical or mechanical based evaluation. Okay. So and prototype also uh, the complete uh, device that we can do the uh, performance test. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is something that is already complete. So you have finished the. Uh, experimental stage okay until uh, you are satisfied with your experiment, experimental process all of the testing has already passed meaning that you will form uh, the final final uh, device that you want to your final device which is we call it as the prototype this slide is still uh, doing something like uh, Auto, how do I stop my auto? I don't know. Okay. So uh, that is about prototype, yeah? And then what is PCB? Okay, I think uh, all of you already know uh, the PCB is uh, the PCB board, which is uh, at the top of the PCB, basically we have uh, some of the components, component that is arranged as in such a way that we can do the connections, uh, the, the connection in terms of traces and pads. As you can see at the bottom of the PCB, we have some traces of, and pads, like in this figure. Okay, so uh, PCB is basically conceived of plana or flat substrate, which has electronic components mounted on it that are interconnected by conductive tracks. So as you can see here, this is the top of the PCB. Top of the PCB, which we have a, a 
places for mounting the components like IC is to be placed here and then some uh, diode and also capacitor and some other components like resistors okay so at the back of the PCB you will see some tracks huh? which is the conductive tracks huh? we call it also the uh, traces huh? traces that is used to conduct the electricity in terms of current okay so these traces will conduct current okay so that is PCB yeah? and then uh, next is the classification of the PCB okay so how do we classify the PCB yeah? so basically it depends huh? not uh, PCB is something like general okay but basically uh, we name the PCB uh, depends on uh, its char uh, different characteristics for example uh, we can uh, call the PCB in terms of uh, their type of circuitry use okay for example there are some PCB uh, that is used for digital huh? which is uh, we uh, the PCB that is used for digital circuit okay so there's also PCB that is for analog like for example this audio system is one of the example of the analog PCB analog circuit okay so some of the PCB uh, based on the digital circuit PCB okay so something like this uh, this is uh, example of the digital circuit which has some uh, ICs uh, some ICs for this counter circuit I guess so and also some uh, PCB based on mixed analog signal analog digital signal so which is which use both circuit uh, analog circuit plus digital circuit in one PCB and then there's also a PCB with radio frequency based uh, PCB to transfer the radio wave for communication system for example and then uh, the PCB that is based on the microwave based circuit so the second type uh, of uh, PCB, which is based on type of electronic components used on that PCB. For example, uh, basically we, we are not only have the, the component with leads. Eh? For example, this diode, this diode have two leads, which is uh, we will put on the PCB and mount it into the through hole. Okay, this is the uh, component with lead. For example, in this case, we have a resistor here, which is mounted uh, through the through hole. Okay, we have through hole here, but some of the uh, component, which is surface mounted, like this is the surface mount uh, resistor. This is another surface mount resistor. And we have also a surface mounted LED, okay? Okay, or SML, eh? surface mounted LED, which is much more smaller than this one. This is the conventional LED. Uh, most of the surface mounted LED is used as a backlight, eh? as a backlight in your cell phone, for example. So we have surface mounted LED on the circuit board, on the motherboard of this uh, telephone or handphone, for example we will notice some uh, surface mounted base LED, okay, or SML. Okay, so it depends uh, on the component that is used on that PCB. Okay, and then some components mounted on one side or both sides. All right, number three, uh, in terms of board, board construction. Okay, so there are two types, uh, two or three types eh, of board construction of the PCB. The first one is we are familiar with, which is single-sided, eh, single-sided board construction of the PCB, which is we call it a single-sided PCB. So the single-sided uh, PCB will uh, look like this, which is we have the upper, uh, The top area or uh, surface, uh, the top area of this uh, PCB 
will be mounted with uh, components and the other side of the PCB will be, we will have uh, some traces and pads, uh, the true holes here. This is the other side of the PCB. And if you flip this PCB, you will see uh, components will be mounted on the, the other side. Yes, this is the back side and the other side will be the components. So this is an example of the single-sided uh, PCB. And the other one here is the uh, double-sided PCB, okay? So as you can see, for the double-sided PCB, it is different to single-sided one, which is uh, the substrate now in the middle, okay? And then it is it's like a sandwich, yeah? Uh, we have silk screen and solder mask at the outer layer, and then the substrate will be in the middle. So as you can see, this is an example of the double-sided PCB. So, and, and then also uh, another type, which is multi-layer. Multi-layer multi normally will have uh, some, at least four layers of the PCB. Okay, four layers. Eh? So we will be uh, discussing more about this uh, PCB construction later. Okay. Then uh, number four. Uh, by application and performance, huh? by application and performance, some uh, PCB used for general electronics, huh? general electronic products, some uh, electrical appliances uh, at home, for example, uh, you see what is inside the uh, your fridge, for example, at the back of your fridge, if you open the fridge, you see that uh, there are some PCBs used for uh, controllers, right? for example. And then uh, some PCBs you will find in your washing machine, for example. Okay, so we have a PCB something like this, which is uh, you can, uh, uh, which is the controller, the controller of your washing machine. At the back of the controller, it's basically uh, at the back of this button. Basically, you will see some uh, components mounted on the PCB. So this is this is basically uh, the example of the. Uh, general electronic products PCB. There are some also uh, high performance uh, PCB, for example, the motherboard system. So the motherboard that can, uh, that we can put the processor, uh, the, the computer processor on it. So motherboard is a type of high performance PCB. Okay. All right. So uh, number five is by design complexity of uh, in terms of uh, circuit density and then manufacturability. Okay, so in terms of circuit density, uh, some PCB will be mounted with many a lot of components and something like this, which is uh, very dense in term in terms of a component is mounted on that PCB. And then uh, some PCB is known by its manufacturability. Uh, some PCB uh, we can easily manufacture. Some of them need to uh, need special uh, manufacturing uh, lines, uh, manufacturing assembly, uh, for example. All right. So uh, okay, now we move on to uh, the construction of the PCB. It is basically divided into three types which is uh, the first one is uh, the single side PCB, okay? Then the second one is double-sided, and the third one is multi-layer. Is multi-layer is other than single-sided or double-sided. So basically, uh, what we normally found in our lab, in our simple project, for example, what we do is to use the single-sided PCB. Okay, in more complex a project, in more complex uh, manufacturing of the electronic components, electronic device, for example, uh, they use double-sided type PCB. Okay, and also some multi-layer PCB, which is much more complex compared to the others. All right, so this is the uh, single-sided PCB. Okay, for the single-sided PCB. Uh, it has the circuit traces and pads. Circuit traces and pads, as you can see at the bottom of this uh, figure. Circuit traces and pads edge on only one side, right? So circuit traces and pads edge only one side, which is in this figure. 
circuit traces and pads are located at the bottom of this figure, at the bottom of this image, right? So this is image of the PCB, and this is the substrate or material. Huh? Okay, so we have through hole here. So basically for single-sided PCB, what we normally do is to place the component from top. We place the component from top. Let's say we have the LED, and then the LED has two leads. Okay, we just put on the leads to this through hole, and then solder it at the bottom. Okay, solder it at the at the uh, pads here. We have the pads huh? so that we can do the soldering. Okay, so this is the single sided PCB, right? So for the single sided PCB, uh, basically there are pros and cons. Uh, the advantage of the single sided PCB is basically in terms of cost. So it is inexpensive, not much cost for the single sided PCB, which is, uh, it is simple in terms of design. Okay, and then it is applicable to straightforward circuit. So most of the uh, circuit which is not too complicated, which is uh, straightforward, which is easy to uh, do the, the soldering or to mount, okay, we use a single-sided PCB. But for the single-sided PCB, uh, uh, one of the drawbacks is in terms of uh, EMI, okay, which is we the single sided pcb if you use uh, the single sided pcb it is difficult to control emi without external shield without external shield okay cover so basically uh, in single sided uh, pcb it is exposed to electromagnetic interference huh? emi is stands for electromagnetic interference for example uh, the the component light like inductor, okay, the component light like inductor, when we uh, place the component light like inductor, when it operates, basically the inductor will, uh, will produce some sort of uh, electromagnet around it. So it will interfere other components, meaning that it will generate noise, something like disturb. Eh? Uh, it will disturb other components to operate. So that one is called the electromagnetic interference. Huh? And then uh, it, uh, another disadvantage of uh, single-sided PCB is it's difficult to control the impedance. Okay. All right. So this is an uh, example in terms of figure for single-sided PCB. As you can see, this is the top view of the single-sided PCB, where at the top of the single-sided PCB, we have a lot of electronic components mounted on it. Especially, clearly, we can see this is the electrolytic capacitor and also uh, the inductor at the back of this electrolytic capacitor. This inductor is basically, we will produce the unnecessary EMI, uh, uh, electromagnetic interference. And then we have some capacitor, and other components like resistors and diodes, okay, some component with heat sink, okay, the metal one here is heat sink yeah? to uh, cool down this component. Then this is what we can see at the bottom of the uh, bottom side of the single sided PCB, some uh, solder connection. Yeah? Actually, we cannot see clearly where is the traces and pads, but some solder, I guess. All right. So next is double-sided PCB. Okay, what is double-sided PCB? Okay, for the double-sided PCB, it has traces and pad on both sides. As you can see, as compared to the previous figure, as compared to this figure, as you can see for this figure, it has uh, pads only on one side okay the copper track here is only on one side but for double sided pcb uh, it has two sided with pad huh? and then we have the uh, through hole with plated through hole so so as you can see uh, 
this is the conducting material eh? and then through the through hole also the conducting material which is copper okay and then at the middle is the substrate so this is the single sided uh, pcb okay so for the single sided pcb the components are mounted only on one side which is uh, similar to the uh, single single sided pcb so for double sided pcb here as you can see uh, com the components are mounted only on one side which is similar to this one which is similar to the single sided pcb this one also component mounted on the uh, one side okay so for double sided pcb as well components are mounted on one side and it has leads that are brought through and soldered as with the single sided board so very similar to single sided but uh, the difference is in terms of uh, the copper track eh? the copper material that is placed at the both side of the pcb for the conducting eh? so in terms of uh, so in terms in terms of the design of the double sided pcb as you can see clearly uh, in terms of electromagnetic interference, this double-sided PCB has advantage because uh, we can uh, uh, avoid some uh, unnecessary uh, electromagnetic interference because uh, we have uh, more space for, uh, for the grounding, for example. We have more space for the grounding. And then in terms of... Uh, control the conduct uh, control the impedance also it's much more uh, easier compared to the single sided pcb so this is the example of uh, the double sided top view of a pcb as we can see there are uh, majority of the space eh, covered by copper eh? for example this these are the, the the side that we use for grounding eh? For grounding of the system so more space can be dedicated for grounding okay and then the conducting traces here at the both sides of the pcb so uh, in comparison to the single sided pcb this two this double sided pcb actually has more space for uh, conducting path huh? like this copper path for uh, conducting the current eh? but for the component it will be mounted at the, just one single side just a single side so only the uh, conducting path is uh, printed at the both side and then uh, finally the multi-layer pcb so what is multi-layer pcb normally for the uh, the pcb that we can call it as multi-layer pcb it has a minimum of two outer layer and two inner layer okay so at least we have a uh, four layer sandwich okay four layers which is two outer and two inner okay so each outer layer contains circuit traces and patch all right so outer layer will be looks like the uh, double sided pcb which has uh, traces and pads all right so component is mounted as with double sided circuit board so similarly for the component it is only mounted just at one side okay the difference for the uh, one of the distinct different for the multi layer pcb is in terms of the inner layer okay what is difference is in terms of inner layer as you can see here for the inner layer it has two layers that one layer is dedicated for the ground connection okay the other layer is for the positive voltage connection meaning that uh, one layer is used for grounding which is internal side uh, the other layer is for positive voltage connection right so vcc is for other in internal layer and the ground is different layer okay so at least four layers are involved in the multi-layer PCB, okay? So this is an example of the uh, cross-sectional uh, area 
as you can see cross section of the uh, multi layer pcb so we have a conducting path or copper tracks at the top layers and also the bottom layers and then in the middle layer we can see that uh, uh, one of the layer is dedicated for the uh, plus polarity or uh, supplier which is the positive voltage connection and then the other layer is dedicated for the grounding and this is another example of the multi-layer pcb which has more than four layers right okay and this is an example of the six layers pcb i have googled this image typing six layers pcb uh, it shows this image which is as you can see clearly in what is inside if you can have a look at uh, from this surface for example you can see there there are some other layers huh? some other layers with conducting pipe with conducting path inside okay so this is a very complex uh, pcb which has uh, more than uh, four layers which is six, six layers in this case and then uh, the advantages of the pcb when we use the pcb compared to the convention conventional method of doing the circuit on the board so uh, if we use the pcb uh, one of the advantage is less room for error because uh, when we do the pcb actually we will start with designing the conducting path of the pcb using the software so when we use the software basically what we do is not only design but also we can simulate the circuit that we have designed the, the drawings that we have designed to make sure uh, there is no error in our design so basically in terms of uh, design we can avoid some errors eh? some errors before we do the manufacturing or fabrication of this pcb so it has less room for error because we we start with uh, doing the drawings of the pcb okay using software okay so in terms of uh for example uh uh, when we do we use the software we we can decide uh, the wirings or uh, the wirings already there in the software we can uh, specify all of the wirings in terms of conducting paths okay so we don't have to use unnecessary uh, physical wirings huh? like we have wires we just uh, we don't have that we don't have to do that so for the pcb it is complete uh thing like this you just already have all of the conducting path on uh, at the back of this pcb so you can see that there is there is no need for us to do uh, the other wiring huh? okay so less room for error okay number one and then uh, in terms of advantage number two is quicker assembly time so with all the wiring completed all you need to do is to insert the component and solder so we have design and then uh, we do the fabrication of the pcb one we have fabricated the pcb another thing that we can do is just uh, take the component and place the component on the pcb so it's all complete just like that so we don't have uh, we don't need to insert the component and solder because uh there is no need to for us to do the connections of the component uh, based on the wiring right so pcb we have already uh have some uh place eh, to 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 put on to place our components so we don't have to do the uh, wirings all right wiring complete and then uh, greater circuit density uh, much less space is required for example if you use with pcb is well designed so there will be no need for us to um, uh, to have more space uh, to to place our component because in terms of a circuit density we can uh, uh, arrange the components 
in such a way that it, is, it looks nice, okay? It looks neat, right? So we don't have to uh, think about of extending this PCB in terms of space. Eh? So we can save much space of using PCB. And then number four is ease in troubleshooting. Okay, uh, PCB will start with uh, drawings. Huh? Basically, when we do uh, develop of predicate the PCB, we will start with drawing. Basically, when we do the drawings, uh, when we have the drawing, actually, we uh, it is easy for us to do the troubleshooting because uh, when we troubleshoot the system, basically, we refer to the drawings. Okay, so that we know uh the connections of the components so from that uh, drawing basically we can trace uh, some of the problems that occurs on that pcb when it it is faulty for example it has burned out the component burns out right and then less skill required uh if we do the pcb the design process will be will be uh, done by the engineers which is uh, specialized in that field so in terms of uh, uh, as assembly of the components on that pcb there will be no need for skip staff huh? for skip personnel to do the uh, to do the component placement okay because uh, uh, everything is already done which is with label or everything like as you can see, this this board for example it has some labels which is specific to that component. For example, so there is no need for a specialized skill staff, staff, huh? specialized skill uh, personnel to do the component placement. Okay. Then number six is use of automatically automatically assembled equipment when we uh, fabricate the pcb for example at the factory some of the mass production of the pcb they use some sort of a special machine that can do the soldering process which is much more faster okay uh, for example they use the uh, molten solder which is something like this the molten solder uh, in the factory for example they use this sort of machine which is uh, at the at the bottom of this uh, this is the pcb which is the pcb will pass through the conveyor okay we run on the conveyor and then at the bottom of the pcb we have uh, like a, something like a tray of uh, molten or the liquid solder and then uh, just uh, when we pass through the uh, the PCB over the uh, liquid solder, it will automatically uh, join and will connect connects all of the uh, pads with the leads. Eh? Okay, we do the join, so we don't have to do like something uh, using the what we call it uh, iron, eh? iron soldering, iron based solder process. So there is no need. And then number seven, less prone to vibration problems. So basically, when we do the PCB, it is uh, something that is high quality, good quality uh, circuit board, which is sturdy, which, which is uh, uh, in terms of stability, in terms of uh, sturdy, yeah, sturdy macam uh, uh, robust, something that is uh, rigid, uh, rugged. Eh? Okay, so it is a sturdy construction. And then fewer gremlin. Uh, gremlin is something like a uh, uh, problem that we cannot see. Actually, when we fabricate something, which is the circuit board like this, uh, when we do testing, there is it was normal. But when we pass to the customer, uh, there will be complaint by the customer because of the some sort of uh, issues. For example, the TV set. Okay, uh, when the customer receive. The TV set, it is something like blinking, for example, because of, we don't know that sort of issue, actually the manufacturing issue. So during manufacturing, uh, we, we cannot detect the gremlin. Okay. Okay. So when we use the PCB, we can minimize, we can minimize the gremlin issues. 
All right. So next is the PCB design concept for 4.2. Okay. Uh, the PCB design concept. So in PCB design concept is actually about the traces and pads. Huh? We designed the traces and pads for conducting path of the current. Okay, from the component to the other component. Okay, so this this uh, section is more about uh, design. Okay, how to produce a PCB design layout and then how to produce the PCB artwork. Okay, so basically what we do is a, a conventional way is to prepare a graph paper or grid paper, and then a color pencil and also the uh, PCB drawing template. Uh, we use the pencil, just the pencil. We sketch the layout and then uh, sketch the traces and pads. Okay, then we do a proper uh, sketch in terms of uh, design of the PCB. But uh, so this is basically based on the hand sketching. Okay, hand sketching. Okay, so which is the conventional method of preparing the PCB design layout. So the other way of uh, preparing the PCB design layout is by using the software. Lah. For example, we can use some uh, many types of so many uh, version, many software offered in the market. Uh, if we Google, for example, we can find uh, software like Easy EDA, Express PCB, where we can uh, register and design our own PCB, and then we can submit. Yeah? We can directly submit to the. Uh, uh, to the factory, for example, for production of our PCB, and they will send it to us. Okay, so that sort of thing we can do with the software, which is the PCB design software for PCB design layout and also the artwork. And then PCB design concept. This is an example of the uh, PCB layout using the computer simulation. This is basically based on the Express PCB. So this is the interface of the Express PCB punya software. Uh, Express PCB software, you can get it from the, if you Google it, just Google the Express PCB, then you will, uh, okay. Should I do this? Express PCB. If you Google the Express PCB, it will guide you to a, a website. Now this Express PCB, PCB we, we can do it online. Eh? Just uh, directly do it at this browser. Okay, so you can only also download the classic version of the express pcb software so that you can design your own pcb and then what you can do is you can submit the your design uh you can submit your design to uh to so that they can manufacture your pcb they can fabricate your pcb and send it back to you in terms of a completed pcb so that sort of thing we can do with express pcb Okay, uh, this is uh, a the Express PCB tutorial. Uh, let me show you one of the video that I have saved in my computer about Express PCB. Just uh, Where is my share button? This is my share button. Optimize for motion and videos. Share my screen. So this video shows uh, uh, about the Express PCB, where we can design the PCB. So it is a free of charge software that you can use to design your own PCB starting from the schematics and then uh, 
once you finish your schematic sketch on the uh, canvas ya yeah, on the software If anything problem with this video or is lag or delay or something just let me know ah I hope that you can see clearly smoothly this video So once we have this uh, sort of uh, schematic design then uh we can do design the the traces and packs hmm? using this express pcb software so this is 13 minute video <laughs> So uh, let me just uh, fast forward. So basically what you can do is to you can place all the components based on this circuit. Okay, based on this circuit, you can uh, search for the uh, correct IC that you want to place. You place all of the components required like this one maybe for the resistor or capacitor or diode. Okay? And we do the circuit trace. There are a lot more uh, components. Huh? You can switch from there. And just place. Place it on your design. Then do all the connection based on your schematic. Okay. So basically for this software, it is manual. Huh? So you will have to refer to your schematics and then do the uh, PCB design uh, manually. Okay. Some of the software, you can uh, sketch the circuit and then can convert it directly to uh, the, the PCB. PCB based layout, right? So I will just uh, fast forward. You can watch it later if you like to. Uh, then, after finish, you can save it. Uh, this is circuit about five, 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 five timer. So this is what you can see at the back. Huh? Once you finish uh, placing the components. What you can see at the back of the board is something like this, which is the, we call it this one as a, uh, apa tu? Uh, PCB artwork, right? This is the PCB artwork. So, then finish. This is the finished work of the design of the 555 timer circuit. So we'll go back to stop sharing this because I'm going to share another optimize for text and image share. Okay. Go back to this slide. All right. So that is about Express PCB. Okay. So give some video tutorial there. So that if you like to use the Express PC, PCB, you can just uh, watch. There are many more tutorials which is available in the YouTube example. You can uh, just follow uh, all of the guidelines using uh, based on the tutorials given in the YouTube. Okay, so next is design uh, PCB fabrication. Okay, so PCB fabrication is, is I think it, this one is much, uh, this is the most uh, important part of this uh, topic one discussion so uh, about the PCB fabrication which is uh, basically about the procedure of uh, develop 
uh, fabricating a PCB. Okay, so uh, we start uh, with uh, looking at this figure. As you can see, this is the maybe a traditional method of using um, using wire wrapping. Okay, we have the wire wrapping uh, procedure. Uh, as we learn in our past session, uh, wire wrapping method, all right? So this is the wire wrapping method with a lot of wires connected to uh, the components, the back of the components, you can see here. It's like uh, something like spaghetti, right? So uh, we don't want something like this, which is, uh, this is difficult. For example, if you want to do the troubleshooting, for example, this circuit is uh, quite messy, right? So what we do is to do uh, the PCB fabrication in terms of, uh, for example, when we do the PCB fabrication, we will start with design. Eh? We will start with design, which is the first stage of the PCB uh, fabrication process. For the design, basically, we use the software to design the traces and pads, okay? And then after that, we uh, based on that uh, drawing that we have in in the design stage, okay. For example, the uh, artwork drawing and also uh, PCB fabrication drawing. Then we do the fabrication of the PCB, which is we use the copper clad. Huh? This is the image of the copper clad. Huh? Copper clad is is the board, the PCB board, which has copper on it. Okay, which has copper. Okay, so this is copper clad. And then we transform this copper clad into a PCB. All right, we transform this copper, copper clad into a PCB based on the etching process. Huh? Etching process is the process uh, that is one of the process to produce the PCB. And then drilling is uh, the final process. So drilling is drilling the holes of the PCB, which is the final process. As you can see on this PCB, it has traces and pads and also the holes that we drill. Right. So, so there are two stages, yeah? design and fabrication for the fabrication process of the PCB. And this is basically a, a normal layout of the arrangement, what we see in the factory. Uh, the factory that is uh, fabricating the PCB, normally uh, the uh, assembly line start with the design, design stage eh, of the PCB. And then after that, we'll proceed to some, uh, uh, which is uh, etching of inner layers. And then uh, AOI is the, something like inspection, lah. something like inspection. Then, uh, Proceed to other parts of the assembly, then uh, drilling, okay, and uh, outer layers, okay. This is for, for example of the multi layer PCB. So, this is how we can fabricate PCB at the factory for the multi layer PCB, and then another inspection here, then putting some solder mask, uh, surface finish, and so on profiling and then uh, finally we do the electrical test and final inspection and then packaging so basically uh, in this as you can see the stage of fabrication process divided into two which is design and then fabrication so for this uh, layout process of producing or fabricating a pcb here uh, this part only dedicated for the design so design only this part these three process and then the other process are all based on the fabrication, okay, are all fabrication process. So this is another uh, video I think might be useful for you to watch, which is how PCB is made in China. I don't think we have time now, whether we have time or not. Six o'clock already. Um, I think we can watch this video by fast forward. Uh, how PCB made in China. So let me just share this video to make sure that you can see uh, in more detail, in more 
based on video will will be more un understand uh, you, you hope that you can understand more on by watching this video where is my sharing button share optimize for motion and video share okay so this is a 32 minutes video that shows how pcb is manufactured in the factory in almost every electronics project i have used pcbs but this time we are going to china to a city called shenzhen to show how pcbs are actually made and thanks to pcb way for inviting this is a uh, actual fabrication process of the pcb at the factory we make a pcb order in their website first engineers so basically we can order it from PCB their website but the uh, uh, maybe it has some um, minimum space, order the space between the presses also so this is what engineers do and ensure that uh, design they is fix, error free they fix all of the traces and pads to make sure uh, that uh, it has enough room for the conducting of the current so they do the inspection of all of the traces here so this is uh, done by the engineers huh? the design is error free and fits to make sure that design is error free the design is perfect after checking several circuits they combine them on a large production panel which is much more efficient to handle to the factory thus the production cost so uh the pcb design will be combined into a large board okay to make the uh, the fact uh, the uh, the process of the fabricating the pcb is much more efficient okay so it will be placed on this uh, large board combine all together some of the different types of pcb available here also decreases And then this is what we call as copper pad. First, sorry, copper clad, yeah. I cleaned in a machine. So a very big copper clad in this case, eh, which is used in the factory. Small pieces, which is suitable for manufacturing. So the copper clad is cut into pieces, which is suitable the boards, for that the PCB the design. Room. Drilling is done for two purposes: for connecting the leaded components and for the wire holes that link the copper layers together and then during drilling process First, the operator takes a mdf board as exit material then he loads one or more pcb panels and place it on the machine and finally adds a sheet of aluminium as entry foil those machines are computer controlled after selecting the right drill program, the machine starts working. Drill change is fully automatic. The machine selects the drill to use from the drill rack and checks that it is the correct size and then loads it into the drill head. So different types of drill bits used. This is a air driven drill which can rotate up to 150,000 revolutions per minute. So After process, that, the corners are trimmed to make it rounded. Deeper process. Uh, then the surface is the clean. edge of the uh, copper plate is uh, not stuck enough. So as the board works, so to make connection between top and bottom layer, the board. So this is an example the of the two layers PCB that is manufactured in this factory. The panels are carried through a series of chemical and rinsing baths by the overhead crane. This is a multi-stage process and everything is controlled by computer to ensure about one micron thick copper has deposited over the walls of the hole. After that, the board goes through a series of process where copper is plated up to a thickness depending on the required final finish for the panel. Copper plating process. This process took about 40 minutes of time 
and then board automatic room we need to put on a special type of anti-static clothes and we need to pass through a dust cleaning clothes chamber. Anti-static clothes is used to enter the factory which is uh, the clean room. Eh? So you see there are some yellow lights. Eh? Some yellow lights is used to expose. Eh? Then, when it is first coated with a layer of photosensitive film, the photoresist which is hot rolled onto the copper. This film is blue light sensitive, so all the lights into the room is yellow, so the light does not affect this film. Then the operator cleans the films. The film is the so the board is blue light sensitive. So they use the the room full of uh, yellow lights. The second the board is sent to the film according to the circuit printed by light. After this, you can clearly see only the circuit is printed by blue resist okay uh, you can see clearly some of the circuit uh, traces and pads is uh, uh, on this board and this material will resist the chemical at the edge unwanted copper due to that the quality of product leaving the production line is high and the items are built correctly and without manufacturing faults Compares the tested solder joints with the qualified parameters in the this database. This is another inspection process which is based on the computer inspection which is can zoom in the uh, pads clearly to see the pads and uh, any defects on the pads for example. Again to another yellow room for solder mask. And then solve mass at this at coating the machine room. simultaneously cover dryer. Usually it takes almost 25 minutes to bake. Still so long mask the machine video, hard in the ink so I just, where the film is uh, unwanted resists are stripped off. If you like to see uh, most PCBs I have a I component legend to show which comp this printer is to protect the copper of solder pad from oxidation. Hot air solder leveling is often chosen as surface. So we we'll see the, uh, this is almost final part of the manufacturing process. Each ASL, they also provide a variety of surface treatment methods such as immersion gold, hard gold, and OSP for customers to choose so according treatment? to their needs. Finally, the PCB see production color of process PCB is done. Blue, green. Then they electrically then test every multi-layer PCB against the original board data. Uh, electrical testing Using of flying the, uh, probe PCB. tester, they test the high voltage insulation and low resist complete. The board this comes into forward. the milling room. Now it's the time to separate drilling, all yeah? individual PCBs from Another, the large uh, production cutting panel. Cutting process uh, of the PCB. The operator loads one or more piece to the CN to choose the right. Some PCB and red color, some green. The board or array and can also dust and cutting. oil stains, metal defects like scratches and marking. Another inspection. There's a lot of uh, every stage of the manufacturing has inspection. Question. And then final process then the as the sealing process and uh, then packing. After printing out the box inside which and delivers okay, uh, all over the world. What I can see from that uh, actual uh, manufacturing process of the PCB is actually uh, it is different to the process the, that we are going to learn. But um, basically uh, there are some steps that we should know in which is the important step that uh, that is used to process the PCB which is much more clear than that because in the manufacturing uh, they got different uh, process 
let me just stop this then i'm going to share the slides again so okay so we have finished watching the video about uh, the process of pcb the, the manufacturing process of the pcb at the factory in china basically uh, what we see from the video was uh, something different what i am going to show you on the uh, fabrication process of the of the pcb as you can see this is the actually step by step process of producing a pcb okay starting from pcb board design based on the computer so starting from pcb board design based on the computer uh, i'm looking for my pointer which is my pointer Never mind. Okay, so start with PCB board design and then printing artwork, exposure, developing, etching, cutting, and drilling. That's all of the steps that we have to take. We are going to take to produce, to fabricate a PCB, which is all six steps. Huh? Six steps overall that we have to follow in pro, uh, fabricating a PCB. So there is another video from Jamaica, which is what Jamaica done. Uh, was uh, he DIY eh? do it yourself DIY the PCB board at his lab eh? okay so this is video based uh, explanation of the whole process here but I'm not going to show you the Jamaica one because I have another video which is uh, much more easy to understand about the process of the PCB uh we have we still have time to watch this video which is quite useful video write this video uh let me just stop sharing this first and share the content motion and video share it dedicated to the dlsu eco car team before I get to more advanced project tutorials like building circuits from scratch for an electric vehicle, this week I'm going to teach you the basics of fabricating printed circuit boards at home. There's a type of board you most probably have never heard of. So this guy is going to show us how, on how we can follow a basic procedure on fabricating our own PCB at home. Okay, so he will show a step-by-step -step process of producing the pcb at home all right oops Shit. it's called the photopositive pcb also known as presynthesized or photoresist pcb it's a type of board with the fabrication method far superior than most methods with it you can build tinier circuit boards with thinner lines perfect for surface mount components The first step in PCB fabrication is designing the PCB layout. If you're working on a personal problem. So the first step is design. Eh? The design uh, made by our own. So we have a lot of software to you can use for design. For example, there is PCB Express software that I have uh, just show to you. Okay, so I'm not sure uh, which software is this guy is using, but he is designing the uh, layout of the PCB. Project, you can use a PCB designing software like Proteus, Eagle, or Altium. In so he mentioned about Proteus, Eagle, okay? Proteus is one of the software that we can use to design the PCB. Projects with existing tutorials, it is customary for the author of the project to attach a scaled PDF file of the PCB artwork. This is something I usually provide with my projects requiring a PCB. Go ahead and print the layout, select the actual size, then open your printer settings. Select the size of your paper. For the paper type, I usually go with plain papers and set the print quality to so once finish designing, just print out to a piece of paper, to a normal paper, which is the uh, white paper. 
Hi, these are my settings when I use regular short bond papers instead of parchment paper or acetate. If you have doubts on short bond paper, wait until you see my trick. Next, you'll need to bring out a cutting board, a cutter, a ruler, and your layout. Use a border as a guide for cutting your layout. Be sure to cut it down to the edge as the cutout doubles as a stencil for PCB cutting later. Once done, inspect your cutout as any kind of ink blots and sludges would reflect on your final output. Now it's time to grab, select, and cut the PCB. And just a short tour of my newly organized workspace, I've sorted out my modules and miscellaneous supply on this cabinet. I usually buy in bulk and stockpile parts and components. I keep all my PCBs in these three plastic containers, separating the single-sided, double-sided, and bare copper clads. When you buy photo-positive PCBs, they usually come in tin foil lined sachets. In my case, I just remove them from the packaging and place them all in this container. These boards come in various shapes and sizes. I usually buy the largest board I could purchase since they're a lot cheaper. Then eventually I just cut them down to the size I need. I also keep the leftovers as they could be handy on smaller size PCB projects. I would usually select the board closest to the size I need, but today I'll be choosing a larger one to teach you how to properly cut a PCB. You can start by laying your cutout on this side of the board. Using a ruler and a marker, mark the borders of your paper cutout to your board. There are two ways of cutting a PCB. One is by using a hacksaw and the other one is by scoring it with the blunt edge of your cutter's blade. Yes, you'll have to use the wrong side of the cutter blade. It takes around 20 to 30 scores to get this done. This only works with phenolic paper-based PCB boards, the one with brown or light-colored brown layers. Fiberglass-based cut so using a cut hacksaw board. of a table. Press it against the table as you try to break the board in half. The scoring method would be he cuts then, the bottom to the same step size would be removing of the, the light uh, protected the film. It's like light. a step. Be sure to do this in a very dim environment when you're ready. And be sure to exposure. Then after Only that, uh, remove this uh, film. The, basically, the purpose of this, this film is to protect this layer, which is the photoresist uh, material here. Feel it when you're ready. And be sure to do this in a very dim environment. In order to let light pass through your... So because this part, which is the surface, is uh, sensitive to the light, so it is covered by this uh, that 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 black uh, sticker, uh, that black uh, something like sticker just now. And uh, he puts some oil, I guess. This is oil. For PCB printout, you'll have to add a few drops of baby oil or cooking oil on your board or it paper. Is also cooking this oil. method turns regular paper into parchment paper. The oil also lets the paper stick to the board, then, uh, reducing the need of using the... a heavy glass to press the paper against the PCB. The, 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 the In order to transfer your PCB printed just... layout on the board, right. we'll have to expose it under light. If you could recall my old FM transmitter project, I used the exact same type of PCB fabrication using a standard fluorescent lamp and a kitchen timer for photo. And then after that, it's exposed to yellow light. Huh? Low exposure. Years after, I made a do-it-yourself. Exposed to the yellow light, it means that developing, uh, developing process, uh, developing process of the PCB. It's like a uh, uh, developing process of the when we produce a photo at the photo lab. Uh, we use a light uh, to develop. Automated UV exposure box. You can browse my channel for this tutorial. It doesn't matter whether you're using LED lights, CFL bulbs, or UV lights. They all work for this project. UV light has an exposure time of around 7 minutes, while LED and CFL bulbs has an average of 12 minutes. Since your light source may vary in intensity and exposure distance, I would suggest experimenting on different exposure durations on tiny board samples until you reach the duration that works best for you. When you're done, remove the paper layout and you can reuse it as much as you want to make more boards. Then clean off the board using soap and water to remove the oil. Just like a camera film, you'll have to develop the board in order for the line traces to show up. This is done by mixing the provided sachet of developing solution so, with a bottle of tap water. It kind of looks like drugs, but it's just a granulated so pouch of sodium just hydroxide. Just now was the uh, exposure, huh? exposed to the lights, to the yellow lights, huh? to the UV lights, okay? After that, this one is actually the developing process, okay? 
oxide or lye, the main ingredient of soap. The amount of water you need depends on the instruction manual that your PCB kit contains. So Usually a sachet the, requires 500 milliliters of water or a liter liter of water. Shake your so bottle shit. until the granules dissolve. Then pour your developing solution on a plastic answer? container, then place your board. If your solution is too concentrated, the lines will show up really fast. Over concentration can ruin your board as there will be unbalanced faded areas. If it's too concentrated, just add more water. This video shows the perfect concentration. So in the developing process, some of the material has been uh, disappeared, which is, as you can see, uh, clearly the traces and pads, uh, which is the clear lines of the traces here. for the solution the lines aren't showing up too so fast nor too process. slow just keep agitating the tray until there are no dark spots left process, as the line chases are perfectly developed uh, when you're satisfied you the with the results you can stop the developing so process by rinsing your board uh, with tap like water this. leaving it too long to the solution would let your line chases fade two times the effective every time remember that the solution a really mild and now you have a mask for your line chases carefully inspect if there are broken lines if there are just retouch them using a marker the reason why photo positive pcb fabrication is with very thin etchants for fabrication on very thin lines next you'll have to choose an etchant there are two so next stage is after developing is etchant eh? which is use etchant to do etching process of the pcb Commonly used etchants for fabrication. On the left is the infamous ferric chloride. So, normally uh, in the etching process, we use the ferric chloride. Eh? We use the ferric chloride, which is this one on the left hand side. This is much more strong etchant, eh? which is different uh, chemicals. So, normally we use ferric chloride. Eh? It's non-corrosive to skin, but it's highly corrosive to metals. Etching time takes around 10 to 20 minutes and can be reused up to 15 times. On the right is a really strong homebrew etchant. I home wouldn't suggest this for first-timers eh? as it Just is really dangerous to stronger. human skin. That's why I went with the good old ferric chloride. Now that you've selected your etchant, grab a plastic or glass container, then place your PCB and pour your etchant. Just like the developing process, you'll have to agitate the fat. Ferry chloride usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes of shaking. I really hated this process, so I made an automated so piece of shaking. Shaker. Which is I'll agitating probably post a tutorial antenna. about this in the near future. The etching process or dissolves the, process the unmasked the copper etching. layers, while the masked ones remain undissolved. If you may have chloride so much for this of a brand new solution of ferric chloride on a small board that I've worked on. You know when to stop when the unmasked copper areas are dissolved the on the etchant. Upon PCB closer inspection, the line seems to be good. This batch isn't perfect as there are touching segments. Once you've checked out and rinse it with water just yet. Before we proceed to the next step, be sure to inspect your copper traces and fix the falsely connected or disconnected line. Now let's remove the paint. It will be really difficult to solder the component so now next step after etching is to remove the paint which is the green one we will have to remove it to make sure uh, only copper is appears here only copper left on this board the best way to remove it is by using pure acetone or paint acetone thinner up, this is the cleanest way to remove the paint without accidentally paint, nicking the, the traces paint. especially when you're dealing with thinner lines with a few wipes and of finally, tissue paper, you know, your board is almost and ready. Traces. The world is full of rules. The mind yeah, is full yeah. of uh, Stop. So we don't want to watch the ads. So just uh, stop it. Uh, continue to our next uh, slides. Okay. So in the video that I've shown you, basically it's uh, the process that takes every step of this uh, PCB fabrication process, starting from uh, design and then print out of the artwork and then do the exposure to the yellow light. Okay, after that, uh, after the exposure and then uh, developing process and then after that etching, after etching is cutting and drilling. So we, we cannot, 
arrived to the etching and drilling process just now because uh, we have been uh, disturbed by uh, an ads, uh, YouTube ads. Okay, so uh, basically in, in that video, actually it has the uh, final part which is cutting and drilling. Eh? So if you have time, you you can watch another video which is Jamaica Circuit Board Etching. Uh, I think I'm not sharing this video because I have downloaded it, but actually you can just uh, Google the same uh, name of this uh, video. Just Google Jamaica Circuit Board Etching, then you will uh, see uh, the result from the uh, search, which is uh, this video in your YouTube. Similar to this one as well, you can Google it. You can uh, search it in YouTube and watch it later. Right, so basically, um, so the first thing first is the PCB board design, which is basically designed based on the software. What I have just shown to all of you just now uh, by using Pro, uh, Proteus PCB Express, you can uh, use that sort of uh, software to produce your own uh, design of the PCB. And then uh, we print the artwork, okay? So basically, uh, we use the normal printer to print this sort of artwork. Okay, this is the PCB artwork. Then uh, we can uh, transfer this PCB artwork into a piece of uh, plastic, a piece of uh, transparent plastic here by uh, based on the photocopy, eh? photocopy uh, the paper to the transparent film like this. So this is another example, which is we have the uh, PCB design, which is the uh, PCB artwork on a piece of paper. Then we can do the photocopy into a piece of film, which is the transparent film here. Then next step is to do the exposure, which is some of the materials used for the exposure. So we use the copper clad and then uh, we stick the film, which is this transparent film, we stick on that copper clad. So we stick the film to the copper clad, which is the outward drawing to the copper clad and do the exposure. Uh, normally, if we use the UV lamp, which is much more faster, but if we can also use the fluorescent lamp, which is our normal lights, uh, normal fluorescent lights here, can use it. Uh, to expose, but uh, fluorescent lamp will take uh, some more minutes to finish. It's longer time. Eh? And then uh, this is uh, figure the process of the exposure. So this is the copper clad. We can just peel off the uh, sticker that is covered the copper clad. Then do the exposure, something like this. Okay. This one, uh, this PCB already we stick it with the uh, transparent film of the our uh, PCB artwork to the copper clad. Eh? Then we do the exposure, which is we have the box here, uh, and then the UV light. Then next process is developing. So we have the mixture, uh, the chemicals used for developing, which is uh, natrium hydroxide. Okay. Nao, huh? Nao, we use for as a developer solution to develop the, the PCB. So developing process is like a film developing in the photo. Huh? In the photography, they also use chemical to do developing. Okay, so this is the another figure that shows the step of the developing. And then next step is etching. Huh? which is the most important part of the PCB uh, fabrication. So for etching, normally we use uh, the solution of the ferric chloride. Okay, the ferric chloride is used for etching of the PCB. So we mix uh, the ferric chloride with distilled water and then uh, we have the container. Okay, this is the ferric chloride powder. 
uh, mix with the water and then stir it until it, it becomes a solution like this. So we prepare the etchant mixture like this and do the etching process. So we put on our PCB and then agitate the container to make it uh, faster for etching process. And then after that, we rinse the our board, uh, our PCB board using the tap water. And then we clean to remove any dirt on it. Then uh, finally is the cutting and drilling process where we use the drill bits to make the hole on the PCB. So there are different size of drill bit that we can use. For example, uh, one millimeter size of drill bit, which is the smallest one, and then 1.5 millimeter drill bits. So it depends on the component leads. Eh? The smallest uh, drilling hole is about one millimeter which is fix uh, the components like LED like this. Some component with a uh, much more bigger uh, size of uh, leads diameter, we will use a bigger size of the drilling bit. Eh? Okay, so <clears throat> then after we finish drilling up our PCB, then we will do the component placement and then soldering. Lah. So I think uh, that's all of the process, which is uh, the most important uh, part in this uh, slide, in this topic four, in this topic four, which is prototyping one, is more about uh, design of the PCB and also the fabrication process of the PCB. So, so I think that's all for the... Okay, that's all for today. So more, we'll be uh, exploring more about uh, prototyping, which is um, uh, in the next uh, topic, which is prototyping part two. We'll be discussing more on the fabrication of the PCB, just a little bit about fabrication of the PCB. And after that, some uh, uh, topic, uh, some sections that discuss about uh, uh, how to do the enclosure or, to, or enclosure or the uh, what we call it as the forgot the sheet uh, sheet metal okay okay uh, in the prototyping part two we will we will uh, cover on the PCB assembly drawings and the rest of the section will be discussing on the sheet metal drawings wiring diagram and so on. Uh. So basically, in this prototype part one, we focus on the PCB design layout drawings, PCB artwork, and also PCB fabrication drawings. So based on the this ten set of drawing, basically, prototype part one cover this three section. Okay. Okay. So I think that's all for today. So we will finish earlier today because I will be. Uh, explaining about your mini project in our Thursday meeting. Hopefully, uh, we can meet around uh, 1.30 in our Thursday meeting of lab, lab uh, session. So I will prepare the material and we'll post it in the e-learn. And then from time to time, of course, I will uh, announce about our progress of uh, this course uh, in your WhatsApp group, lah. right? So I think that's all for today. Uh, okay, so thank you. We finish up to this time, yeah? Six thank 30. you, doctor. Okay, no problem. You are. Nampak? Can you see that QR code? Nampak. Terima kasih, doctor. Sama. Hari ni tak ada orang ke ofis. Saya seorang je datang ofis hari ni. Okay, so Doktor see you. Doktor dekat UMT ke? Sorry? Doktor dekat UMT ke? Saya kena buat kerja kat ofis lagi sekarang ni sebab sebab barang-barang saya semua ada kat ofis. Oh, okay, okay.
Nanti online lab pun saya akan buat kat sini. Okay, okay. By the way, thank you doktor. Okay, sama. Thank you.